Let us look at neurulation. By day 16, the embryo consists of three layers, endoderm, mesoderm, and ectoderm. Ectoderm, develops into the nervous system. By day 18, part of the ectoderm begins to thicken. This portion, is called as the neural plate. It lies between the cranial end and the primitive node. This process, in which the neural plate transforms into the neural tube is known as neurulation. On day 19 neural plate starts to buckle in the midline. Signals from notochord are responsible for changes in the ectoderm. The depression created is called as groove, while the mount-like structures are termed as neural folds. These folds progress towards each other and begin to fuse, around day 21. In this process, the neural crest cells, form a layer at the top of the closed neural tube. These crest cell, contribute towards peripheral nervous system. So please remember, the notochord will give rise to the central nervous system while the neural crest cells, which will eventually migrate in mesoderm, will give the peripheral nervous system. Fusion then continues in synchrony, towards cranial and caudal ends. At both the ends, there is an unfused region named as anterior or cranial neuropore, and the posterior or caudal neuropore. Remember, anterior one is also called as rostral neuropore and it closes by day 24. You can clearly see here, that the cranial neuropore will be the first one to close by day 24 or 25. The posterior neuropore however, would close by the 28th intrauterine day. So in normal babies, neurulation would have occurred in two distinct phases, primary neurulation during weeks 3 and 4 of gestation leading to development of the brain and spinal cord, and secondary neurulation during weeks 5 and 6, with formation of the lower sacral and coccygeal cord. In mostly all of us, including you and me, both the neuropores closed by the 25th and 28th day respectively. But in some unfortunate cases, these pores, fail to close. These neuropores if not closed at the right time, leads to serious life-threatening conditions, and lethal anomalies. Anencephaly is when the neural tube fails to close at the caudal pore. With this condition, the baby born lacks part or all of the cerebrum, the skull bones are also absent. A baby born with anencephaly might be stillborn or survive only a few hours to a few days after birth. Spina bifida would occur if the posterior, or caudal neuropore doesn't close by 28th intrauterine day which leads to incomplete development of the fetus spine. But it's important to know that the condition varies widely in degree. Most cases are so mild they have no symptoms and don't even need treatment, this occurs with spina bifida occulta, or hidden spina bifida. However, infants born with a more serious type of this disorder have open lesions on their spine where there's significant damage to nerves and the spinal cord. The opening can be repaired through surgery, but the nerve damage isn't resolved and that causes permanent disability. But just imagine, what if both the neuropores do not close? This leads to rachishisis. You can observe that the brain is not covered by cranial bones, and the light-colored spinal cord is totally exposed. But how could you diagnose closure defects? Remember that, Many closure defects can be diagnosed by the detection of elevated levels of alpha-fetoprotein in the amniotic fluid or, by ultrasound scanning. 